Thank you for joining Relocating to Disney. Now we had an interesting thing happen when we visited Florida. You, if you've watched this blog before, you know that we are set to build a house in Florida, in Mineola. But we wanted to search for existing houses to see if we couldn't get a better deal. Because building the new house uh, was rapidly getting very expensive. And there was some downsides, which I won't get into in this, in this video, but I'll discuss later. Well, we found a house we were interested in. We put a purchase offer in, and they accepted. Now, I'll describe the whole process that we went through at a later time of, of how we did that uh, process and getting it accepted. But for now, what I want to do is explain to you the interesting circumstance that we are in right now. Because at this moment, we have put in a purchase offer on a house to buy, and we haven't sold our New York house yet. So that's going to be some unique challenges. When we were doing new construction, we weren't going to close on that new house until after this one was sold. So we didn't really worry about having a down payment or closing costs or anything like that. But now, because this house isn't sold yet, those are issues. So I want to explain to you a little bit about this circumstance of buying a house in Florida when you haven't sold your existing house yet. And to do that, I want to write out some things on a whiteboard. Oh, no. Well, let's give it a try. When you sell your house, you will have something that's called equity. And equity is the amount of money that's left over after you pay everybody off. You may have to pay the bank off if you still have a loan. You may have closing costs, whatever. When you're all done, you have equity. And then you can spend that equity however you want. And when you're buying a house in Florida, this equity comes in handy. Part of that equity will go to pay for your down payment. Part of your equity will go for your closing costs. Part of it will go to pay for moving to Florida. And part of it will go toward furniture and incidentals, anything that you have to buy once you are in the house. So, and then you've got hopefully some money left over for whatever else may come up uh, that, that you may need to do. When you sell your house and you have the equity, you have supposedly money to pay for all of these different things. But when you haven't sold your house, you don't have the money for these things. So what do you do when you need to buy the house in Florida and you haven't sold your existing house yet? Well, we talked with our financial advisor and he okayed us to take a loan from our 401k to bridge the time between the closing of the Florida house and the selling of the New York house. Now, everybody's circumstances are different and you need to talk with your financial advisor to make sure that a 401k loan would make sense in your particular circumstances. Don't do it based on watching this video. In my case, it works out well. But there's some things you've got to know about loaning from a 401k. And it was a surprise to me. There's a cap to how much you can loan from your 401k. And that cap is $50,000. Now, if you have multiple retirement accounts, maybe a pension, 401k, 403b, or whatever is out there, you can take multiple loans. But from a 401k, you can't take more than $50,000. There's actually a formula that they use to figure out what the maximum is, and no matter what that formula says, it'll never be more than $50,000. So if you need 20% down for your house purchase, you might not be able to get it from a 401k loan. Luckily, we have enough assets to bridge the difference. So we'll be able to cover closing while we wait for this house to sell. The assets that we had built up were intended to pay for moving to Florida and purchasing furniture. 
So what we'll have to do now is once the New York house sells, we'll pay back the retirement and pay back any uh, money that we had put on the credit cards to pay for moving to Florida. So that's pretty much what it comes down to. There are three gates that you have to get through when you buy a house. First one is the inspection. If you find the perfect house but it doesn't pass inspection, you're not going to probably want to buy it. And there's a lot to the inspection. I'll cover that in another video. The next gate you've got to get through is the appraisal. Now just because somebody wants a lot of money for their house doesn't mean their house is worth it. And the bank is only going to loan you what the house is worth. If you want to pay more than the house is worth, you can. But the bank's not going to give you the money for it. So that means you may have to chip more in out of pocket if that house is selling for more than it's worth. And remember, even if you chip more in out of your pocket, you still additionally have to cover 20% for your down payment. So overpaying for a house could end up being very expensive. Now, once you put the offer on the house, the house will get appraised and if it doesn't come back as being worth it to the bank, then there's a negotiation that has to happen between you and the seller to figure out how you're going to bridge that difference. Of course, the seller is going to want you to chip in and pay the difference. And the buyer is going to want the seller to lower their price. If we can't figure this out, then both parties just walk away. But that's the second gate that we still have to get through. Okay, now the third gate, financing. That means my broker is going to give me a loan for the house. That means all my finances have to check out and they have to be comfortable with the loan. Now, if any one of those three gates fall apart between now and closing, closing isn't gonna happen and the purchase of the house won't happen. So we're at this stage now where we are progressing through the gates, making sure everything's getting done in a timely and orderly way so we can be ready for closing. We have our fingers crossed and we hope everything goes as planned and as expected. Now, if, if something falls apart and it doesn't happen, we still have the new home construction that we could fall back on. We won't be canceling that until we are sure that this new home purchase deal goes through okay. If it doesn't go through okay, we can still build. If this purchase goes through, we'll be canceling the order for the construction of a new house. So I'd like to tell you that the experience I'm having right now is unique. I don't know that it is or it isn't. But I'm hoping that by sharing my experience of what I'm going through, it'll help you if you want to move to Florida so that you can know what to expect. In, in future videos, I'll be uh, explaining some of the work that has gone on to get us to this point. And I'll be explaining the work between now and closing and actually moving into the house. I'm also going to continue to talk about the new construction and you'll be able to see how that all works out if we end up having to cancel. So thank you for watching this update and tune back again.